Boop. Happy Thursday. Not just any Thursday. Maundy Thursday. Not Monday. Yeah, I know you want to say Monday. I do too. Um, but it's Maundy Thursday, and this is the day where we remember the Last Supper and that gathering that Jesus had with his disciples where they um, uh, he prayed for them, blessed them, told them what was going to happen, um, washed their feet, you know, because they were nasty, um, and broke bread with them and instituted what we celebrate as the Lord's Supper. Your church might call it the Eucharist. Um, you might call it communion. So anyway, today's daily Bible readings come to us from Exodus 12, 1 through 4, in parentheses 5 through 10, and then 11 through 14. So let's just say Exodus 12, 1 through 14. Uh, and then Psalm 116, 1 through 2, and 12 through 19. And 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And then John 13, 1 through 17, and then skips and picks up again at 31 through 35. Um, and I'm going to look at Exodus 12, 1 through 14. Last year for Maundy Thursday, um, I did the John text. I'm a pastor, so I can say it, the Johannine text, uh, but the text from John. Um, so today I'm going to look at Exodus 12, 1 through 14, and I'm going to talk about DoorDash or a recipe for deliverance. Um, and so you have this here where God is giving instructions through Moses of how the people of Israel should prepare for their departure from Egypt. And it begins with take a lamb for each family. So take one perfect lamb. And, and it's, it's like, you know, a start in a recipe, take this lamb. Um, and it even has, you know, like suggested servings portions, you know, like it serves one family or, you and your friends, if you, your household is not big enough. So one lamb serves one household. And then the recipe gets kind of odd. You're told to take the blood from the lamb um, and paint it on your doorpost. Dash it on the doorpost on lentils. Um, and, remember, and, and this way, God will see the blood. He says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Um, and so, you know, the kind of question is, what is, what is it with the blood here? Um, it's not just that, that God just loves blood or that, you know, the Passover angel is somehow scared of blood and sees it on the door is like, oh, no. Um, this idea of dashing the blood is pretty common. Matter of fact, when they get out of Egypt and the tabernacle is consecrated and the altar set up, even in, right through to the celebrations at the temple in Jesus's time, there was this aspect of dashing the blood or sprinkling the blood on the altar. Um, and, and I really, I think you should think of it this way, that this, remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how God made this covenant with Abraham or Abram at the time and called Abram to take these animals and slaughter them and lay them apart. And then, uh, you know, talks about Abram fell into this kind of deep funk because he realized what was going on. He was making this covenant with God and he was going to act out this thing where, like I said, you pass through the all this awful and you you recite the words of the covenant. And basically you're saying, whatever, I if I don't fulfill my covenant, this is what you may do to me. But God is the one who passes through the pieces of the animals. He's the one who passes through the blood. And this is, I think, God's way of reminding himself, hey, I made a covenant with these people. I made a covenant with their father, Abraham that I would make a great nation of him. And so in the midst of this, in the midst of him, let's say, chastising the Egyptians uh, in this one last plague, uh, he is reminding himself that the whole reason this, you know, I'm not going to touch these people because I made a covenant. I made a promise. And the blood is to remind him and to save the people, to deliver the people. Great, it's Maundy Thursday. We're remembering Jesus' supper. Well, surprise, surprise, the, the supper of Maundy Thursday happens as part of the Passover festival. At the end of this passage for Exodus, it says in 12.12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. So God's coming to execute judgment on Egypt and their their gods, their false gods. 
He says, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And so Maundy Thursday, Maundy Thursday takes place at the time of Passover. Jesus is gathering his disciples again, together again, one last time for this feast, this memory, this remembrance of how God delivered the people. But the recipe is a little different. It's, it's still take one lamb, take one perfect spotless lamb, but now the lamb is God himself in the presence of his son as the perfect lamb who doesn't just serve one household or you and your friends. It's one perfect lamb that serves the entire household of God. Not, you know, and it's not just for the deliverance of Israel, but now it's deliverance of Israel and the nations. So that's what Maundy Thursday is. If you've never been to church for a Maundy Thursday service, you should think about going. There's plenty of churches around that would love to have you. And uh, you can gather with them and remember that God sent this perfect lamb for deliverance of the nations. And that includes you. So anyway, that's the DBR for today. We will be back on Good Friday, and we've got a surprise. This year, we have one of our alumni who's a pastor in the area, and we are going to share his Good Friday service with you, his Good Friday message, rather, for the DBR. So anyway, have a good day. Get out. Enjoy this weather. It's a little chilly where we are, but it's a gorgeous sunny day after all the rain we've had. So anyway, boop.